Welcome to the Asus ROG phone. Nah, I'm kidding. That's more like it. Not quite sure why I threw the smaller box. We do actually need that. In fact, we're going to start with that. This box is even lighter than it looks, and to be honest, when Asus sent me an email a while back saying that they wanted to send out the ROG phone, this is about as big a package as I was expecting. The entire other crate was a complete surprise, but at the same time, very excited to see what's in there. With price competition in the phone market becoming fiercer by day, it's unsurprising that packaging has sort of taken a back seat, and so seeing a phone presented like this is a real surprise. It comes with their own proprietary aeroactive cooler, not to mention this separate hexagonal box which contains a 20 watt charger, and of course a USB Type-C cable. Okay, smartphone itself, and as you can see, it's a little different. We're gonna come back to that giant secondary package in a minute, but even without anything else, the ROG phone is a ridiculous bit of kit. It weighs 200 grams, has Gorilla Glass 6 on the front, and it looks like an absolute unit. We've got a 6 inch 1080p AMOLED display, but more interestingly, a 90Hz refresh rate. This might actually be the first OLED smartphone ever to use over 60Hz, and what this means is that the phone just feels a little smoother and more fluid, but noticeably less so than the 120Hz on the Razer phone. You've got 8GB of RAM and an overclocked Snapdragon 845 that runs at 2.96GHz instead of 2.7 or 2.8, and obviously, of course, a vapour chamber to keep it cool. Not to mention the detachable Aero Active Cooler for if you're trying to game whilst also charging. Performance is very good, but at the same time not entirely different from the Note 9 or the OnePlus 6T, and I'm not sure this slight overclock was worth the effort. The real differentiator here is the attention paid to gamers. The ROG phone has built-in ultrasonic sensors, which essentially act as air triggers. You can squeeze the sides of the phone to enter the performance-focused X mode, and also use the triggers as programmable shoulder buttons when playing games. The front-firing stereo speakers are some of the better available. The device supports 802.11ad Wi-Fi, which is even faster than AC, and there is a side-mounted port. For playing games while charging. And this port comes into play with accessories, and let's just say the accessories that are built for this phone aren't the ordinary kind. That leads us onto this behemoth of a package. This one was a bit of a struggle. While the first package was lighter than it looked, Let's just say the second wasn't. And as you can probably tell right now, what we have here is an Asus ROG branded suitcase. That's ridiculous. After a couple of minutes of just enjoying the simple pleasures of a product with wheels, we get to opening this. And there's a little bit of shrink wrap on the handles. You can see the Republic of Gamers logo on there. And there's a code to unlock it, which thankfully ended up being 000. Otherwise, well, this video wouldn't have been quite as good. Inside, I almost didn't know where to start. There are six giant packages, all to do with the ROG phone, various gadgets and accessories that go with it, and there's actually room for the phone box as well in there. Now, to be honest, with at least half of these before I opened them up, it wasn't actually clear what they are, but being the heaviest and the coolest looking box, I decided to start with the TwinView dock. Turns out, this is almost definitely the most over-the-top smartphone gadget you've ever seen. It's got a 6-inch AMOLED secondary screen, which, funnily enough, is made to look almost exactly like the front of the phone, so when you slot your phone in there, it looks like you have two of them. And functionally speaking, it literally feels like you have two separate phones. Although it's all being powered by one, you can run two separate full-screen applications on each display. You can play a game on one and watch a YouTube video on the second one, not to mention the dock gives you physical shoulder buttons, enhanced cooling, a 6,000 mAh battery pack, and haptic feedback using inbuilt vibration motors. Also, while that second screen isn't a phone in its own right, it has its own set of stereo speakers, creating four speakers in total. The display resolutions. You might notice that for this test, right, so nearly two and a half hours into this test now, and you'll notice the iPhone XR has been Oh, 
Okay, this is the mobile desktop dock, which if you literally just wanted to connect your phone to your TV to show some photos, is probably a little overkill. But if you wanted to use your phone as a workstation, then it makes a lot more sense because it is loaded with ports. You've got four full-size USBs on there and even space for an ethernet cable. This is the Game Vice, which once connected to the ROG phone, allows you to remap all sorts of virtual controls to physical buttons, which is nothing new, you've seen that on all sorts of Bluetooth controllers before, but this one is actually connected directly via the USB-C port, so there's pretty much no noticeable latency. Also, the controller, as you can probably tell, feels pretty great. This is the Ygig, which has a similar functionality to the mobile desktop dock we looked at earlier, but this one is wireless. The main thing I was actually worried about going in was latency, because when you move from wired to wireless connections, generally there's a little bit of perceptible lag, but actually that wasn't a problem at all. The only thing I did notice is that the frame rate isn't as high using a wireless connection as it was using the wired. The onslaught of accessories continues, and they call this one the Professional Dock, and it has a USB Type-C, two USB-As, as well as a full-size HDMI port. Oh yeah, and room for Ethernet. The last accessory we have is this one, and I'm sure you're readying yourself for some sort of secret feature, but this one actually really is just a case. <sighs> so, the ROG phone. Pretty ridiculous, right? Even without the accessories, the phone is just bonkers through and through, and it's a weird one because I'm amazed at how much effort Asus has put into it given how niche a phone it is. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.